Sorry guys, back here again. I'm not sure what happened. My phone, uh, the uh, broadcast was interrupted somehow. So I'll just start where I left off in that um, a description of how our body uses fuel. So again, our body has two sources. And I'm starting from the beginning because this is refilming. So our bodies use um, two sources, one of two sources for fuel. And we use fuel 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So our bodies are always consuming some type of fuel, right? That fuel comes in one of two formats. It comes in either glucose or stored glucose in the way of glycogen in the muscle or liver, or our body, if it has no glycogen or glucose to draw upon, our bodies will oxidize fat will convert fat into what's called ketone bodies and use those for fuel. So the, the most important lesson I've learned in body composition management is that we have to manage the glucose, right? Because what happens is if we have, our bodies would, would prefer from an ease, ease of use standpoint, our bodies, what's up Jason? Our bodies would prefer to use glucose. For many reasons, right? Our body can more quickly get to it. Our body can more quickly transform it into energy that it can use more quickly. So our bodies prefer to use glucose and or stored glycogen for energy. So if that's available to us, to our body to use, then it prefers to use that, okay? And only after the glycogen or glucose tank has been emptied out will our body resort to having to oxidize fat, which is a slower, more long-term process, only after it's expelled all of the glycogen and, and glucose will our body begin to convert body fat into energy. So the real trick right, to managing our body composition really comes down to that very simple, very simple formula, right? the management of our body's glycogen levels. So if you imagine, and I, and I use this analogy because I want you guys to think about it when you're out doing things, whether you're working out and decreasing, hey Deidre, and decreasing the glycogen, hey Jess, or if you are either putting in more, more fuel, hey Ron, right? So I want you to think about when you're out doing things, when you're out eating or running or working out, this is two sides of the same equation, right? One side is either is building up the glycogen store, imagine stopping into a fuel center or a gas station and you're putting more gas in the tank. And one side of the equation is depleting those glycogen stores, right? So we need to always be cognizant of that simple formula. And number one, never go over so our bodies store fat. And number two, ideally, if we're trying to lose body fat, if we're trying to change our body composition, is to regularly get the glycogen levels and glucose levels down to zero for an extended amount of time to allow our body to burn fat, okay? So two tanks, right? Glycogen or glucose, right? Glucose or stored glucose in the way of glycogen is what most of us rely on, right? Most of us are sugar burners, all right? So I'll get to you in a minute, uh, Pubu. Uh, the other side of that equation is ketone bodies. When our bodies have no more glycogen or glucose, to draw upon for fuel, it then oxidizes body fat into energy. So we don't burn it. We don't burn fat. We we oxidize and change fat into energy our body can use in the way of ketone bodies. So once we have no more glucose or glycogen, that's why all this this ketogenic dieting is is useful. That's why low carb, no carb really can be useful because our body's forced to convert body fat, which is what we want. We want to convert body fat and begin to transform our body composition. Hey, Greg, so when we're out doing things, here, so here's a perfect example of, of why many of us are frustrated, right? And I, was, and I was one of those people for a little while before I kind of understood what was happening. So for many of us, right, and let's take the average American who does not exercise, who consumes mainly carbohydrates, right? A, a, a high carbohydrate uh, diet. So they, if you imagine the, the glucose and glycogen tank, right? They operate for the most part at 75, 80, 85% full capacity of the glycogen tank. 
That means your body never triggers hormones to oxidize body fat, number one. Number two, that means they're almost always at the level where the next nutrient they eat, the next meal they eat, is going to take them over consumed, right? Full of glycogen, full of glucose, right? At that point in time, our bodies have no other recourse than to store it. Thanks, Jason. Right? No other recourse than to store it. And this 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 uh, equation applies mainly and almost solely to glycogen. Our body can use fat differently. Our body can use uh, protein differently. Now it can it can convert protein back into into glucose if it has to, but typically it uses that for other important things. So for the most part, this equation on losing weight comes down to our management almost entirely of glycogen and glucose, right? Protein and fat especially healthy fats, can be of more benefit to us, hey Bertrand, than glucose, right? So we're focused mo mostly, which is why the industry has been on this no-carb, low-carb um, uh, slant, if you will, for, so, for, for the last maybe 10 years because they understand that that's kind of the, the, the magic, right? They don't tell us how or why, uh, but that's the magic. So the problem is, is that many people, right, the average American operates daily at the 75, 80, 85 percent range, right? So now you go out and you have a good time on a three-day weekend, like Labor Day, and you consume above the full tank, right? So now every additional nutrient you take gets stored as body fat, right? How, now how scary a, a proposition is that? So the very next thing you eat, if your body is, is, is full of glycogen, right, of glucose and stored glycogen in your muscle and liver, if it's full, as most people operate close to capacity, then the next nutrient you eat is going to get stored as body fat. It's as simple as that. So if you imagine the, the analogy I used in my last um, Facebook Live was uh, a kitchen, right? So when we eat something carbohydrate-based, rice, bread, uh, donuts, sugar, right? Even if it's healthy, correct. Fruit, right? When we eat sugar, right, it immediately, it immediately goes into our bloodstream. So that can be equated to the countertop of a kitchen, right? So it puts it there and, and our body can use that immediately. That's why when you train, having sugar is good because your body can use that immediately, Okay, the problem is once that bloodstream is full or once your body panics, hey Jennifer, once your body panics and, and secretes insulin and sends all that blood out of your blood sugar, either way, right, it, it, it's full or gets rid of it. Now all that is sent to either your liver or your muscles for storage, right? Longer term storage, not long, long term like fat, but longer term storage, right? Once that area is full, once the muscle and the liver are full, your body has no other recourse than to store it as fat, right? And some of that stored glycogen in the muscle, some studies show, can only be extracted via exercise. So if you go low carb, that's fine. If you run, right, or do steady state cardio, that's fine. But some of that glycogen can only be extracted and taken out and used up through exercise of those muscles, okay? So... Again, we eat bloodstream, right? Either it gets full and then the next nutrients get stored or our body will get rid of some of that. Either way, it gets sent elsewhere to our muscle and our liver. Once those three areas are full, which for most people, because you're already acting or, or, or living at near capacity, our body has to store the next nutrients as fat. All right? So the problem is we don't understand that. Right? We don't understand that. So we walk around thinking that we're doing okay by not eating certain things. We're doing okay by walking a little bit, by exercising a little bit. And all we're doing is depleting that glycogen store just a little bit. Now, we're not going to get fat that way, which is good. Right? So one way to, to start this process is to never get to the point where you're storing any more body fat. So stop the bleeding. Right? But we're never going to lose any body fat either if we don't get to a point where we're regularly depleting the glycogen and glucose levels in our body to force our body to oxidize body fat. All right? So that's how it works. It's really that simple. Don't allow your body to get to full capacity in glycogen storage. 
so you won't get fatter, right? And number two, if you're trying to change your body composition, you got to get rid of some of that body fat, so regularly force your body into oxidizing body fat by having your body glucose tank depleted regularly, all right? So how does that look, again, for a typical American? And I'll explain to you how it looks for a person who thinks they're doing well, right, who thinks they're eating clean or healthy, okay? So let's say you are, let's say you're carrying some body fat, and let's say it's some percentage, I don't know, I'll make up a number. 12% body fat, 20% body fat, what does it matter? All right, so you start eating clean and exercising, right? You're not doing any high intensity exercise yet. Maybe you're doing some walking or jogging or treadmill or biking or running, whatever. The output of that is not requiring a lot of usage of energy, right? The reason high intensity training is good for you is it forces your body to use up fuel, right? So what we have to do is we have to figure out What's going to get that equation in our favor and operate from that standpoint? All right? So you're right, Jennifer, and I'll get into that. Ketones are great for people who are trying to battle uh, or prevent cancer from, from what the studies show. But you're right. Sugar is bad. Cancer cells love sugar. All right. So here's what happens to a typical person who, who, who's overweight, right? Maybe has some body fat they don't want, but is trying to lose weight, right? Trying to lose Weight number one, the, the weight number is not as important as the body fat number, the body composition. But let's just say weight. So if this person begins a a thirty day cleanse, right, or or begins some program where they're going to start ordering only fresh and clean and 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 nutrient based foods, right. So they're eating what they think is better. Maybe they begin exercising, right, but not intensely. Again, moderate walking or jogging or so forth, all right? So they're getting their, their glucose levels down, right? So now instead of being at 85, 90% storage capacity, maybe they're at 50 or 40, excuse me, or 35, right? Never zero probably because they're still eating some foods. They're not going no carbs. They're not fasting. So they're still not at zero, not prompting their body to burn body fat, right? So they're at a capacity. This is some real time stuff, guys. I'm actually moving this this uh, talk to my home office uh, because it's closer to the router, right? So this is my uh, this is my cowboy room, my football room. Got Amari, my son on the wall, right? So I'm gonna do it from here. I'm gonna do it from here, guys. Make it a little bit uh, uh hopefully is it too bright? Sorry. Oops. Let's try this. Let's try this. Oh, it's too bright. Sorry, guys. Let me get let me get a position here uh, on the floor. Here we go. Let's try this. All right. Sorry. Sorry for the confusion. So uh, I know the angle sucks. I apologize. No, Trump. But I'm trying to get. I was getting disconnected, so I'm getting closer to closer to the router, and I'm trying to get something that's not too awkward for us. All right, so so where was I? So so our body will. So the person who is 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 eating well, eating more clean, will reduce the storage of the glycogen in their body, right? But they're not getting to zero. They're not getting to empty. So what they're doing basically is not getting fatter, which is good, right? Stop the bleeding. So eat clean, exercise a little bit, right? Never get the glycogen levels above 100%, forcing your body to store extra nutrients as body fat, right? So let's say you do that for 30 days, right? Or 45 days or, or two months, right? You're eating clean. You're going to lose weight initially, right? As many of you have experienced. You're going to lose weight. You're going to lose water. You're going to lose stored glycogen, right? The glycogen that's stored in your muscle and liver will attach to water. So all these diets that have you go low carb, they know you're going to lose weight because you're going to lose the glycogen storage and you're going to lose the water. So you're going to lose weight. You're going to, you're going to feel better. You're going to be excited about this new program, but none of that yet is body composition change. None of that yet is body fat loss. Okay. So again, let's say you're, you know, you're at a certain weight, you've lost some pounds, because you've brought the glycogen levels down, not to zero, and let's say it's 30 days, right? And now you've kind of stagnated, 
right? You're stagnated. You're you're frustrated because you you don't like walking really. You don't want to work out anymore. You're tired of eating just uh, avocado on whole grain toast every morning. And so, and you've already lost five pounds. You've been at that same level for two, three weeks, and now you're frustrated. So, for whatever reason, you decide to have a little fun on the weekend. Come on, Bobby. I want to have fun. I get it. I get it. But here's the problem, guys. Here's the problem. So, let's say it's Friday, like today, going into a long weekend. Let's say you've done this for 30 days or 45 days, and you've had success. You're feeling good. You go out tonight. You have drinks. You have sliders, you have not whatever nachos, you have your fun, right? Let's say you were operating at about 25%, 40%, 50%, whatever it is, below, let's say it's below zip, below halfway in glycogen storage, right? Now today, because you want to enjoy yourself, because you've earned the right to enjoy yourself, you you splurge, you have a little fun, you go out. You miss a workout today because it's Friday, going into a long weekend, whatever, right? So you don't decrease the glycogen storage by working it out and then you put more in. So let's say tonight you go out and you get up to 90%, 95% of full of capacity. All right? Now it's now it's Friday night going into Saturday. Now Saturday comes around, you wake up, you have breakfast, you know, with your with, with your friends, you have a barbecue you go to, it's a long weekend, maybe you traveled somewhere, whatever. Or you go to a ball game. Now you're over capacity. Now everything you eat for the most part, if you don't work out and get and get that get those levels down, everything you eat will get stored as body fat. Almost immediately as body fat. So you went 45 days, you went 30 days of eating clean, lost some weight, lost some water weight, lost some uh, glycogen storage, right? If you're lucky, you didn't lose any muscle, right? But the bad thing about it is you didn't lose any body fat, right? And in two or three days. Of one weekend, you gain body fat. Right? How frustrating is that? Right? You did all this work, lost some weight, was happy about it, then change your, your body fat percent that percentage, body fat total, pounds, and then you spend one weekend having having fun, and in one weekend you gain some body fat. Now it won't be a lot, it won't be a pound. The scale might say two or three pounds gain, but most of that's gonna be glycogen storage back. Right, glycogen stored back, water stored back, but some of that is gonna be fat. Because again, once your body is full, the bloodstream, it gets full in the liver and muscles, the next nutrients are stored as body fat. That's how it works. That's how the body works. Don't get mad at me, other people, oh, that's not fair. I know it ain't fair, but that's how the body works. Right? So we have to be super, super careful to watch the glycogen storage levels. It's that simple. It's that simple. And if you never go over, right, via eating better, eating less carbohydrates, via exercise, if you never go over that, you will never store body fat, period. Period. Never store body fat. So that at least stops the blood from, from, from flowing, right? The, the, stop, stop the bleeding, right? Now what we want to do is begin the other process, right, of losing body fat. Right, so to do that, we have to be smart about it, and we have to to begin to get our glycogen levels down to zero, right? And we do that on two sides of the equation. We do that by eating less glucose, less sugar, less carbs, right? Down to low, 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 and then exercising in a way that will use up most of those carbs, right, in the workout and the time after, and then allow our body time, you know, long periods of time. To cut through those stored glycogen levels, and 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 force our body to oxidize body fat, and most of us don't do that for long enough periods, right? We don't we don't we don't go long enough periods without eating, uh, or train hard enough, or eat low enough for our body to ever need to use body fat. Why would our body use body fat when you give it ample energy elsewhere? It wouldn't. Right? Why would our body, which was trained over thousands of years to, to store body fat for times of famine and then release body fat when needed, why would our body ever do that when we never force it to do that? We always give it what it needs almost immediately. Right? So, very simple, right? Two tanks. Glycogen and ketones or fat. We have to force our body to oxidize fat. 
right? We have to get our glucose levels low enough and at the very least not allow them to get high enough to store body fat, okay? So the mindset should be, and it's about mindset. And so I'm going to give you two, two tips on mindset, on, on ways to think about uh, this whole process. And so, you know, I did a video maybe a year ago. It was called Eat, Eat Like a Beast, right? And I talked about how everyone for the longest time since I was in high school and early college days have talked about my work ethic and training, right? And the term wasn't, wasn't around back then, but the term now was that you, you train like a beast. Are oh, you a beast? You train like, and I say it all the time too. So I always say, yeah, you know, but I'm lean now. I'm going to be 45. I'm leaner now than I was, you know, for sure 10 years ago, for sure 15 years ago, maybe as lean as when I played in college. But that's not because I'm, I train differently. I've always trained like a beast, right? So my training is the same, but my my body composition and the way I approach it didn't change until I started thinking like a beast, right? And eating, more importantly, like a beast. And so there's two analogies, right? Number one is we are the only animal in the animal kingdom that eats whenever we want and eats for enjoyment and eats for pleasure, right? So what do beasts do? What do animals do? They eat when they have to, right? Number one, they hunt before they eat, Right? So that's the equivalent of training before we eat. Right? So if I'm going to eat carbs or, or something big, I make sure that I train that day. Number one. Number two, beasts, right, only kill what is necessary. Right? You don't see a tiger chasing down a deer and then saving it and going out and get another deer for later. Right? They only kill what they need. What do we do? The opposite. We get a plate full of crap and we eat all of it. When all we needed was a little bit of it, right? So number one, we, we don't ever hunt before we eat. And number two, we don't ever kill and eat just what we need, right? And then number three, animals, when they're done eating, when they're, when they're satiated, again, they're only eating to, to survive. They're not eating for fun. It's not a happy hour in the jungle. They're eating for fuel. Their bodies are programmed to eat when they need to eat, as our, ours were Thousands of years ago, so they only they they finish when they're when they're satiated, when they're full, and they move on. Especially a beast that hunts, like a tiger or a lion, they don't want to be sitting there all tired and sleepy, right? Vulnerable, so they're gonna go out, they're gonna hunt, they're gonna eat, and they're gonna be done and walk away when they've had enough, right? We don't do any of that, and so when I so recently I've been thinking, okay, how how would a beast eat? If I was a lion and a tiger uh, and, and I'm the master of the jungle, I want to be a beast, how would I eat? And that's how I would eat if I was a beast, right? Or I use the analogy of just about every, every animal, but also of, of humankind until about 200 years ago, right? And I was thinking about Spartacus, right, and, and, and 300 and being a Spartan warrior, right? And how those guys, they, they didn't wake up and have breakfast, right? They didn't eat until they were full, Right? They, 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 they went out for the hunt in the morning or the kill or the fight. Right? They ate enough to be energized for the fight. And that was it. Right? Maybe occasionally when they came back, they celebrated. But it wasn't a daily, hourly thing. Right? So we have to think differently about how we eat and how we train and why we're doing it. Because if we don't, then, then we're, then we're going to be... Um, vulnerable to a, an industry, right, in fitness that has billions of dollars to lure us into buying whatever they think we want or whatever they think we think we want, right, at, the, at, at that moment. And we'll, we'll continue to go back and forth on diets and, 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 and exercise programs and so forth unless we change how we think, all right? So some real-time advice, right, and I'm, I'm going to let you guys go. So... For long weekends like this, well, for, for, for general day purposes, I monitor in my head my glucose levels. Now, I do it in part on the scale, right? You kind of, there's a range, and so I know kind of like what my heavy, heavy number is and my light number is, right? And I'll use that as a gauge as to where my glycogen levels are, right? So if I wake up on a Monday and it's at 
a certain number that's high, I know that my glycogen levels, which they usually are on Sunday nights, Monday morning, are high. So that means I have to fast longer, right, on Monday. I have to train harder, which is why Mondays are my training days, my hard training days, and get those levels low. Because I'm, my body won't start converting body fat into energy until I've gotten rid of all that sugar, right? So, number one, I monitor that. I never want to go over to store body fat. Now that I know that our body is going to store fat almost immediately, I make sure to watch the scale. I make sure that I don't go back to back to back days of eating crap and not working out. That's why I haven't missed more than three days of working out since 1990. I mean, back then it was all mental, but now I know I can't go two days without working out, right? Especially if I want to eat what I want to eat, right? You're building up the glycogen levels. Right, not not getting rid of any of it, and then you surprised you gain fat. That's not how it works. So I make sure I monitor that, right? Through training, through eating, okay. And then when I when I know something's coming up, like a weekend like this, when I know something's coming up, I plan for it. I don't miss the Friday workout going into a three day weekend. No way. There's no way, right? I might fast longer on a Friday. And work out knowing that I'm going into a weekend where I'm going to have heavy consumption of carbohydrates filling that tank up. Right? Because again, if I get to the point where it's full, every next nutrient is going to be body fat. Right? So today, I fasted a little longer. I trained. I trained yesterday a little bit. I trained today. I'm going to train tomorrow morning. Right? I'm going to a football game tonight that I know I'm going to probably have some carbs. Right? I try to watch it, but I know t I train today and tomorrow, so my levels aren't too high. So in these weekends, sometimes I'm just trying not to gain fat. Right? Not necessarily lose body fat, but just don't gain any. Right? So be smart about what we do, guys. I know people people say, Well, how you have fun? I have fun. I just know how to do it. The smart way. Right? If I want to go out with my buddies and have beers, that's fine. Get your ass in the gym before you go. Or fast before you go. Have a protein shape before you go so you don't have the beer and nachos, right? So it, it, people say it's not fair. That's how the body works, right? That's how the body works. So watch the glycogen levels. Try to deplete them by working out. I'll give you tips on that as we do these talks. Uh, and then when you know you're going to do something on a weekend or you're traveling, be smart before you go. Get the glycogen levels lower. So you don't go over on Saturday or Sunday, right? Or if you're going to be going over, say you say you're going on a trip and you're having you know, beer with your buddies or whatever every night, every morning get up and instead of going to breakfast too and then going to dinner with your buddies, doing what they do, like I had a rule, I don't let my fat friends dictate my schedule, period, right? So if we had, if we had dinner last night and ice cream and beer and we get up and they want to have breakfast, I'm going to work out. I'll meet you guys later. No, come on, Bobby. No, I'm not letting, my, I'm not letting my, my friends who don't care about how they look dictate my schedule. Right? So if you know you're going to go to dinner that night, you don't have to have waffles at breakfast. Right? So you, so you make decisions. You work out instead. You fast longer. Then you can have fun later. But you can't be selfish uh, to your body and think it's all about you. You have fun, 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 fun. And think your body's going to respond in, in a good way because it won't. Because it won't. All right, so long weekend. You know, hope that's helpful to you guys. Watch what you eat a little bit. If you can't do that, have some meals that you don't eat and fast longer, right? And or get some exercise in, right? Ideally, some high-intensity, short burst uh, exercise is going to give you a, a bigger window for calorie burn and get rid of some of that stored glycogen in the muscle, all right? Next time, guys, I'm, I'm going to keep doing these. So post questions. It's hard to answer them as I see them when I'm talking. I can barely talk without looking at the damn messages. So send me, uh, uh, when you see these, uh, my, my, uh, my messages that I have a talk coming up, post questions beforehand, and we can get those answered. All right? So have a good weekend, guys. Uh, I went longer than I had hoped, I think. Uh, hope it was helpful. I haven't talked about ketones at all to you guys. Uh, that I take. I'm not. I'm not trying to be overly salesy on that stuff, but I will get into how I use uh, the ketone supplement um, to help me uh, in my efforts. All right, guys. So have a good weekend. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them here, and I'll answer them in the uh, comments. All right, guys. Have a good weekend. Love you guys. Take care. Be safe. Bye bye.